in my first tech job, I was the only woman in the office. I was transitioning from teaching, so I was used to rooms that look a lot more like this one. But I quickly learned, like Melissa, what it felt like to be the only. I had male allies, mentors, leaders who were incredibly generous, who were men of integrity, who helped me to negotiate a 54% pay increase when I was out of parity with my male counterparts. Yes. <laughs> But I also had to come to terms with the fact that the gender equality I thought was solved with the suffragettes did not apply in corporate spaces. Each of you are here today because you have likely experienced that to some degree. You have seen the massive gap that exists between men and women in the corporate sphere. For so long, the narrative has been towards us how we can change our behavior. So we've said yes to opportunities. We've negotiated our salaries. We've found mentors. But that's only half of the equation. If we want to solve gender equity, we need to close the other gap by enlisting male allies. We need male allies who sponsor women, who acknowledge their influence, and to change the status quo. Only then will we see parity. So today I'm here to share four quick allyship tactics with you that you can start using today. Whether you're an individual contributor, whether you're an HR, whether you're women, men, wherever you fit on the gender spectrum, you can start enacting these allyship tactics to improve workspaces for women and other underestimated groups. Now Sid said this was okay, so everybody stand up. We're halfway through the session. I told you I was a former teacher, so we got to get that blood flowing, okay? We're going to go rapid fire through these, and I want to hear your voices. Let's see how you're reading it. I'm going the wrong direction. And to be an ally, your first tactic is to amplify other. Voices. Louder. Amplify other. Voices. Your second tactic to be an ally is to live out. Yeah. Louder. Live out. <laughs> live out. Thank you. Your third tactic is to lift as you, Rise. lift as you, Rise. and finally, this one is so important, for women and other estimated groups, underestimated groups, we will say, yes, I, say it again, yes, I, thank you. You can have a seat. Let's go rapid fire through these. First, amplify other voices. In the Obama administration, despite the fact that they had one of the most diverse presidential cabinets in US history, women and junior aides were still finding themselves being spoken over. So the women in this organization adopted an allyship tactic called amplification, where they did two things. First, after a woman spoke, they said her name, and they restated her idea. This is genius and so easy to replicate. When you are in a meeting setting, you can amplify a woman's voice by restating her name and her idea. Say something like, I loved Jalen's idea to do this, and I want to add to it. Or, wow, Veronica, that was such a great point. I want to emphasize her idea to do this. Amplification is not groupthink. It's not celebrating bad ideas. It is elevating women's voices. Think about what this can do for other identities in your org. What about the introvert, okay? If you can amplify her voice after her comment, she's more likely to contribute. What about the junior aide or the intern? They don't know if their voice matters in that space. Well, you amplified their voice and you made sure that you were an ally. The second tactic is to live out loud. This is not some YOLO mantra, y'all, okay? What I mean by live out loud is you are going to literally speak out loud about your life responsibilities outside of work. Like Nate did with his non-negotiables, you are going to tell your company when you are leaving for that choir concert. My boss did this for me after my recent maternity leave. I was afraid to talk about the fact that I was pumping in the office. I was afraid to talk about any kind of parenting responsibilities because I was worried that would make me less promotable, an issue that Sid mentioned already today. My boss one day turned to me after getting a phone call from his wife and said, my kindergartner is sick at school. I'm going to go pick him up, and I'm going to finish the rest of the workday at home. That is living out loud. Or if you're leaving work early, Tuesdays and Thursdays, you're going to coach t-ball practice. Say it out loud. 
Women receive a penalty after having children. The motherhood penalty represents about a 6% decrease in compensation over time. We can help women, mothers, and everyone in our office feel safe by speaking out loud about our life responsibilities. Third, lift as you rise. Ladies, we know that female rivalry is a tale as old as time. There was Jennifer and Angelina. There was Katy Perry's bad blood with Taylor Swift. There were the TikTok wars with Selena Gomez and Hailey Bieber, okay? I personally have experienced female rivalry and left two jobs because of it, only once by choice. We have to eradicate female rivalry from our workplaces. So women and allies, what can you do? You can talk to her instead of talking about her. You can find a mentor and you can be a mentor. You can practice the mental gender swap, which is this exercise where you ask yourself, would I pass that same judgment if she was a man? Would I think that she was being aggressive if she was a man? If I saw her leaving early for soccer practice, would I say, she's not taking her job seriously? Or would I think, wow, she's really honoring her family commitments? One other way that you can lift as you rise is to have transparent salary conversations. Utah's gender pay gap is 10 cents below the national average. That's terrible. We can do better, and again, you may not be able to have a pay audit. You might not be in the C-suite, but what you can do is proactively share your salary with other women in your network and organization. Men, we especially need you to do this. We're not trying to make more than you. We want you to receive what you earned, but we need to be powered with empowered with information. Lift as you rise. And finally, learn to say, yes, I believe you. When a woman comes to you with a complaint, say, yes, I believe you. When a woman comes to you with a story or an idea, say, tell me more. When a woman comes to you thinking about her career ambitions, don't make assumptions about what she wants. Ask her, what do you want? Brene Brown actually refuted her previous belief that you can read emotion in others in her last book. She said, our privilege is to believe others' stories. She came across a 20-something Latinx single mother crying in the stairwell at her office, and rather than saying, well, I can see you're feeling this, she said, how are you feeling? She listened, and she said, I believe you. We can be better allies for women and underestimated groups in our organization by amplifying women's voices, by living out loud, by lifting as we rise, and always, always believing women. Then less of us will have to have that experience of being the only, and we will be surrounded by allies like you. Thank you.